If I tell you that a particular hand requires a mixed strategy where you need to bet it 44.4% of the time and check it the other 55.6% of the time, do you have any idea what that means? If not, keep watching this video, you're exactly in the right place. In this one, we're going to define what mixed strategies are, look at an example, and also talk about why mixed strategies are important in today's games. Good morning, how are we doing today? My name is James Sweeney, AK Split Suit, and today we're going to talk about mixed strategies. And let's just start with definitions so we're all on the same page with what the heck this term means. Since it's a term that gets thrown out a decent chunk of the time, but people aren't necessarily sure what the heck it really means at the end of the day. So simply put, a mixed strategy is when a specific hand is required to take differing actions at differing frequencies. So you might see a GTO solver suggest that this hand should be bet 30% of the time and check the other 70% of the time. Contrast this with pure strategies, which are the opposite of this, this is simply when a hand should do something either 0% of the time or 100% of the time. So it's a binary decision when you're looking at something from a pure strategy point of view. So don't worry if the words make sense, but the concepts don't necessarily make a tremendous amount of sense right this moment. I think when we go through an example and look at some solver output, this will kind of start clicking a little bit more. So what I want to do is pull up the GTO solve for a very simplified model. This is called the perfect polarization model. Model. And in case you're unfamiliar with it, I'll just do a quick refresh of what the exact spot is that this model is exploring. Simply put, the perfect polarization model explores a heads up situation on the river. There's $100 in the middle and $100 effective for both players. The aggressor is out of position. They have a polarized range, which means just value hands and bluffs. Their value hands will always win at showdown and their bluffs will always lose at showdown. And you have the defender who is in position. They have a range of pure bluff catchers. Their bluff catchers will always beat bluffs bluffs and their bluff catcher will always lose against the opponent's value hands. So this is the simple perfect polarization model. Now if we run this model using GTO plus and see what the solver suggests the out of position or the aggressors overall strategy should be on the river, this is what we're seeing. And we're noticing that there are some pure strategies and also some mixed strategies in here. So all of the bets are in blue, all of the checks are in green, and we notice if we look at something like king-queen suited, this is a pure strategy, right? It is betting 100% of the time, checking 0% of the time. And by the way, sometimes it's going to be 0% bet, 100% check, that's also still a pure strategy, because again, it's that binary decision, either always do something or never do something. Contrast that to something like 5-4 offsuit, where you notice that there are some bluffs and there are some checks. And you see that exact same thing for all of the kind of weakish hands in the range. And if you look at the value combinations, so if you're looking at these pseudo combinations like 5-4 suited, you notice that the diamond combination is a pure strategy. All those value combos are pure bets versus say 5-4 of hearts or 5-4 of spades. Those are back to mixed strategies between some betting and some checking. But what's really interesting is when you also look at the EV of the different lines that the overall solver is suggesting here. So if we zoom in on something like king-queen, right? Top pair here, always going to be a value bet according to the solver, the EV of betting is is plus 150 bucks, great. But the EV of checking is plus $100. And same thing with something like 5-4 of diamonds. Contrast that to the bluffs, right? Take 5-3 offsuit, for example. Well, the strategy that the solver suggests is bet it 44.4% of the time, check it the other 55.6% of the time. But here's the interesting thing. The EV of betting, $0. The EV of checking, $0. Same thing for something like a 5-4 offsuit bluff, exact same frequency suggestion, exact same betting and checking EVs. So even just from this basic exploration, a couple of lessons start emerging quite quickly. Lesson number one is that the solver is always looking to maximize EV. That's all it's trying to do. So if you've ever heard of the concept of something like a loss leader, where you're going to take some hands and play them deliberately at a lower EV, attempting to make more money in the overall strategy, but we don't see that when we're looking at the solver output here. Since the EV of betting the value combinations is plus 150 and the EV of checking is plus 100, you'd suspect if loss leaders were good, then the solver might suggest that, okay, well, maybe we'll take some of those value combinations and sometimes check them. But it doesn't. It always prefers the maximum EV, and since 150 is higher than 100, this solver is definitely suggesting that those get shoved into the overall betting range. Now, keep in mind this is a simplified model, but you're going to see this concept show up a lot when you're looking at solver output in general. So again, the big takeaway is that we always find that the solver is trying to maximize the EV of our overall strategy by playing every individual hand at its maximum EV. We cannot boost the EV of our overall strategy by deliberately lowering the EV of specific 
perfect hands within that strategy. Lesson number two is that mixed strategies are mandatory, absolutely mandatory when you're looking at GTO poker overall. So even just taking the simplified model we've looked at so far, let's look at the basic underlying math that we have here. So in the model we've looked at, the aggressor reaches the river with 45 air combos and 40 value combos. And given the aggressor needs to maintain a one to two bluff to value ratio, that means they can only bet 20 of these air combos as bluffs. Now, since the aggressor's value hands can never actually lose, they would ideally just increase their bet sizing. And with doing that, if they could then fire a larger portion of air hands as a bluff. However, because we have $100 effective in this situation, that's not an option since we are capped at the $100 or essentially a single pot size bet. That is the maximum bet sizing we have in this example. Given all of this, the aggressor can only fire 20 of their 45 air combos. This is the same as bluffing 20 divided by 45 or 44.4% of the time when holding a bluff. So if we thought that that 44.4% mixed frequency that we were looking at earlier from the solver output looked a little bit weird and random, now we can see that that's definitely not a random number, it's extremely deliberate, and it makes sure that that bluff to value ratio of the bets remains perfectly balanced. So although the EV of betting and checking these air hands is identical, right, both is zero EV, employing mixed strategies is not optional in this case. The mixed strategies are actually mandatory in order to make sure the aggressor maintains the correct bluff to value ratio when betting the river. And lesson number three is that mixed strategies equal equivalent EV. Mixing is only an option when the EV of two or more lines is completely identical. If a solver is recommending a mixed strategy, it means the EV of the mixed lines must be equal. We therefore need to keep this in mind when analyzing solver output. And I say this because a common pitfall the players have when they're looking at solver output is they say, okay, the solver suggests a mixed strategy here, but one frequency is clearly higher than the other, and as such, the frequency that is higher must actually be a better overall line. Even in this exact situation, where the solver is suggesting that you check it 56% of the time and bet the other 44% of the time, you might have a knee-jerk reaction to say, well, clearly the solver is saying that we should be checking more because that's a higher frequency number, and as such, let's just throw them all into checks. That must just be better but it's not. And this exact same rule applies whether it's a more extreme situation, where the solver is suggesting maybe you bet it 95% of the time and check the other 5%, you might just say, well, let's just bet 100% of it. But according to the solver and the actual EV, you can't, mixed is exactly what it should be. Otherwise, if it weren't and the EVs were actually different, then the solver would make a different suggestion, even possibly turning it into a pure strategy where it's do something 100% and another thing 0% of the time. But if it's giving you a mixed strategy as an overall output, it's because the EV of that mixed line is exactly equivalent. Now I do want to throw in just a little bit more here since I think it's easy to look at this and then say, okay, well clearly we should never ever throw strong hands into our checking range because that's what the solver is suggesting here. Well, we have to keep in mind that this is a very simplified overall solve and we don't want to over extrapolate such massive things that make some real strategic errors based around that. Because let's just see what happens if we throw some extra air into the defense overall range. Now let's see what the solve is actually suggesting that we do in this spot. So once we throw in a number of busted gut shots alongside those 10x bluff catchers for the overall defender, the busted gut shots will currently chop at showdown against the air hands in the aggressor's range, and may benefit from actually trying to fold the aggressor off a chop when checked to. So based upon this, the solver is now suggesting a new river strategy, and notice that the aggressor still has the exact same number of hands in their range. Their range has not been touched at all here, still has the same 40 value combos still has the same 45 air combos. But you notice now that those value combos, those king queens, are now actually getting checked some percentage of the time. Still betting a good chunk, still betting 75% of the time, but now all of a sudden you're noticing about a quarter of those hands are supposed to be getting checked according to the solver. So what we can confirm here is that the aggressor is now required to protect their checking range with some strong holdings. This is referred to as range protection, and essentially to ensure that the aggressor isn't over heavily check folding on the river. The aggressor is still maintaining a perfect one to two bluff to value ratio when they do bet, but the aggressor also needs to defend exactly half the time when checking the river and facing a pot size bet from their opponent. So this overall strategy prevents the defender from being able to make auto profitable bluffs. Whereas if the aggressor was still taking the pure strategy suggested in the previous solve, then they would simply not be able to check and defend often enough when the defender does bet against the aggressor's check on the river. And that would be a massive problem in the overall strategy of the aggressor. 
aggressor. So hopefully based upon everything we've talked about today, the next time you come across the term mixed strategy or even pure strategy, you know exactly what the heck is being talked about. And if a solver is suggesting a mixed strategy in a given situation, understanding that the EV of both lines it's suggesting you use are exactly equivalent. That's very, very important. And by the way, remember earlier when we talked about mixed strategies being mandatory according to the solver? There are other things that are mandatory as well, and I talk all about them in my new book, GTO Gems. You can look for it on Amazon if you'd like the paperback or the Kindle, or go to redshiftpoker.com slash gems to learn more about it and pick up your copy. This essentially takes all of our years of solver output and exploration and simplifies them down into actionable insights that you can really understand and really use at the end of the day to improve your poker strategy. Again, GTO Gems, go to redshiftpoker.com slash gems to learn more and pick up your copy today. That's going to wrap it up for this one. Thank you so much for hanging out today. I'll see you back shortly with a brand new video. And in the meantime, good luck out there and happy grinding.